So there's a really quick test that can tell you when a sum diverges, but you can't use this test to prove that a sum converges. It's only good as kind of the easiest way of proving that a series blows up. And here's the motivation for it. So any series is just a list of infinitely many terms. And here I've shown the first couple and dot, dot, dot. And then I get all the way to the thousandth term and its neighbors. And my point here is just that there's a lot of terms and they just keep going forever. If you want this to add up to some finite number in the end, these better be getting really, really small. In other words, they have to approach zero. Otherwise, you're adding a finite number infinitely many times and the thing is going to blow up. Okay, so I could say the a k's or the a n's better be approaching zero as k or n approaches infinity. There's a quick proof of this that I thought was worth including. And so the proof starts like this. Let's assume that this sum converges to some finite number s. That's going to give us a condition on the behavior of the individual a's. In particular, I want to show that they go to zero as k goes to infinity. In terms of our mathematical approach to it, what I'm going to do is say, well, look at my kth partial sum. That's the sum all the way to 8k. Look at my k minus 1 partial sum. That's the sum of the first k minus 1 terms. And I can isolate 8k if I take a difference of these two things. 8k would be this partial sum minus this one. Everything cancels except that kth term. And that's what I'm trying to get a condition on. So that's why I'm going through the effort to isolate it. And what I want to find out is what's the limit as k goes to infinity of a k. And that's going to be the limit as k goes to infinity of my kth partial sum minus limit as k goes to infinity of my k minus 1 partial sum. Well, the limit of a sequence of partial sums for this series is going to be equal to the sum of the series if it's convergent, and it is convergent. So I'm going to get s minus s. It doesn't matter that there's a k minus 1 here. That subscript is still going to infinity, so I'm still going to get the sum. And so that's equal to 0. So what I just figured out is if a series is convergent, then the kth term must go to 0. We did not prove that if the kth term goes to zero, then the series is convergent, that there are a lot of counterexamples to that. That's not true. But we know if it does converge, the kth term must go to zero. So how do we put this in, into use? Look at example one. I have a sum of n over n plus 1 as n goes to infinity. And I'm going to look at the limit as n gets large of the nth term. And informally, if I just think about the highest power of n dominates the numerator and likewise for the denominator, this is approaching n over n, which is 1. If I handle it a little more formally, I have to divide the top and bottom by the highest power of n. And that gives me 1 over 1 plus 1 over n. And then I say this part, the 1 over n is unambiguously going to 0. And so I get 1 out of this limit. So I just found out that when n gets large, these terms are approaching 1. In other words, it's like adding 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 infinitely many times, and my sum is going to diverge. If I go back and look at my theorem, my theorem said if a sum is convergent, then the nth term must be going to 0 as n becomes large. And if I turn that around, it means that if my nth term is not going to 0, there's no way that this thing is a convergent sum. So we conclude our original sum diverges. That's really all this theorem is good for. And what you want to do is try to really quickly glance at this every time you're presented with a series. Are the terms actually going to 0? If they're not even going to 0 as n becomes large, there's no hope of convergence. All right, how about the next one? The nth term is clearly going to 0 as n becomes large. If I write it more formally, the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n is equal to zero. But the point on this one is that doesn't prove that the sum converges. It just We just failed to prove that it diverges by this particular test. So it does not prove convergence. We just failed by this particular test to prove that it diverges. Now, in fact, this series does diverge. This is a special series called the harmonic series. 
And the way I'm going to prove that it diverges in a couple videos is by using what's called the integral test.